Jakarta is the capital and the largest city of Indonesia and one of the most populous urban agglomeration in the world. Located on the northwest coast of Java, Jakarta is the country's economic, cultural, and politics center with population of 10,075,300 with additional 2.5 million during the day. It is the most populous city in Indonesia and in Southeast Asia, while Jakarta city area is 664 square kilometer. Known as Jabodetabek, a name formed by combining the initial syllables of Jakarta, Bogor, Depok, Tangerang, and Bekasi, is the second largest in the world. Yet the metropolis's suburbs still continue beyond it. With 28 million people in the metropolitan area, nearly 10 million vehicles in daily use, and limited rapid transit system, Jakarta is strained by transportation problems. The alternative solution of Jakarta's transportation problem shall be solved by providing mass rapid transit that is environmentally friendly and powered by electricity. By adopting system that is utilized in another country such as Singapore and Japan, government of DKI Jakarta established the organization that is fully responsible to all activities starting from the engineering service, construction through operations and maintenance. The organization is PT Mass Rapid Transit Jakarta. Rail-based MRT Jakarta will stretch over 110.8 km of Jakarta roads, consists of south-north corridor of about 23.8 km and east-west corridor about 87 km. This project is funded through step loan by JICA and includes the first subway line in Indonesia. The construction of south-north corridor that stretches along Lebak Bulus, Kampung Bandan will be carried out in two phases. Phase 1 will be carried out to connect Lebak Bulus with Bundaran HI over 15.7 km railway with 13 stations, 7 elevated stations, and 6 underground stations, which is targeted to operate by 2018. Phase 2 will expand South North Corridor from Bundaran HI to Kampung Bandan over 8.1 km railway, which construction will have been initiated before Stage 1 operates. The construction of MRTJ Phase 1, which includes of 13 stations and 6 packages, have been commenced since August 2013. Elevated packages CP101 and CP102 that consist of Lebak Bulus, Fatmawati, Cipete Raya stations along 5.95 km, elevated package CP103 that consist of Hajinawi, Block A, Block M, and Sisinga Mangaraja station along 3.84 km underground packages CP104 and CP105 that consist of transition area Senayan, Istora, Bendungan Hilir, and Setiabudi station along 3.89 km are carried out by Shimitsu Obayashi Corporation from Japan, Wika and Jaya Construction from Indonesia, underground package CP106 that consists of Duku Atas and Bundaran HI stations along 2.02 km. SOWJ is abbreviation of Shimitsu Obayashi Wika and Jaya Konstruksi joint venture, which constructs CP104 and CP105 packages. Those packages are underground packages that include transition area, station and tunnel construction with total length of 3.89 km. Transition area or cut and cover area will be located in Sisinga Mangaraja Road until Bundaran Senayan along 460 meters. This area is a transition phase from elevated structure of CP103 package to underground structure of SOWJ packages which will be constructed by soldier piling method. There are four stations, Senayan, Istora, Bendungan Hilir, and Setiabudi that will be established. Distance of cut and cover to Senayan station is 322 meters. Distance between Senayan and Istora station is 630 meters. Distance between Istora and Bendungan is 1,080 meters, and distance of Bendungan to Setiabudi is 580 meters. Length of each station is 200 meters, except for Istora station, that will be 220 meters. Tunnel structure is purpose for railway of the MRTJ train. Tunnel structure is consists of two lanes, down track or southbound, and up track or northbound lane. This facility construction will be conducted by Tunnel Boring Machine, also known as TBM. TBM that will be used is Shield Machine with Earth Pressure Balance Type. 
inner diameter of tunnel that required is 6050 mm. This tunnel is completed by a reinforced concrete segment as supporting lining structure. According to the geotechnical report in CP104 and CP105 project location, the tunnel alignment is along Jalan Sisinga Mangaraja through Jalan Sudirman, consisting of 39% silty clay, 1% silty sand, 40% of cemented silt, and 20% of cemented sand soil type. This soil condition will affect the type of TBM that utilized for this project. Majority soil layer which is passed through by TBM is cemented silt. Due to that condition, the type of TBM that is selected for this project is Earth Pressure Balance Shield Machine. Cut and cover area is located in Sisinga Mangaraja Road which bordered with CP103 package until Pemuda statue at Senayan. This area is transition phase from elevated structure to underground structure. The cut and cover area is constructed using soldier piling method. H-beams will be used as the major material of soldier piles. Before driving the piles, position alignment and orientation of the piles must be established. Piles will then be driven by vibrator hammer unit into the marked position. Piles shall be driven in the straight vertical position, otherwise driving will be difficult. All piles will be inspected for excessive camber or sweep. After completing the soldier piles, excavation of the first layer will be carried out. And then a temporary deck and the first whaler strut will be installed. Excavation for the second and third layer of base will be continued. The bottom layer will be completed by blinding stone and lean concrete. The process of base slab concrete can be started. The station is constructed using a top-down method. In order to retain the soil and water pressure while commencing a deep underground excavation for main station boxes, diaphragm walls will be constructed. The trench is excavated using a mechanical and hydraulic clamshell. And then a reinforcement bar cage can be lowered down into the excavated area. The next step is pouring the concrete, which is carried out by Trummy method. This cycle is repeated for all four sides of the station. The diaphragm walls will function as temporary retaining walls during construction and also as a permanent retaining wall for the station structures. Before starting the excavation process, king post must be installed as a temporary support for the roof and floor slabs. The first excavation will be conducted and followed by the casting of roof slabs. With openings at the round of king post, the second excavation can be conducted. After installing the concourse slab, a concourse column will be casted, and then the third excavation can be conducted. Before casting the base slab, blinding stone and lean concrete will be installed. The final process is backfilling the roof slab by soil and compacting it by grater and vibro roller. EPB shield machine is not designed as a whole complete component. Shield machine assembly is located at the launching shaft beneath Pemuda Statue's Naya. This machine is formed by some parts which have special function for the tunneling work. When the TBM is completely assembled, it will be positioned facing the tunnel eye seal. The TBM will then be slowly proceeding forward. The tunnel eye will be broken by TBM roller cutter. TBM will then break out launching shaft and entering into the ground. Cutter head is the main component for excavating the soil. This project requires circular spoke type cutter head structure and flat front shape. To simplify the excavation process, a chemical injection will be required to produce a soil excavation result that is suitable for discharge by the screw conveyor. The chemical will be injected both at the face of the cutting wheel and within the cutting chamber. This chemical will be mixed with excavation material by rotation of the cutting wheel and the mixing arm. After the cutter head rotate to excavate the soil disposal, it will be transported to a screw conveyor. The screw conveyor is used to deposit excavated material from the cutter head chamber onto the hose along the backup car. 
soil disposal as a result of excavation will be transported from screw conveyor to hose system. The screw conveyor has one gate for mark disposal pass into the 14 inch hose. This hose will be ended at backup car number 1. Soil disposal from backup car area will be delivered by muck car to the cut and cover area. The full muck car will be hauled back to the opening by locomotive, hoisted to the surface and emptied into the muck pit. Another locomotive will go back to the TBM carrying the concrete segments and three empty muck cars. After the excavation cycle is complete, the shield jacks are left locked onto the previously built tunnel rings to keep the TBM tied into the tunnel face and only enough shield jacks will be removed to allow the placement of one tunnel segment at a time. The segment erector can pick up the first segment from erector pickup area and place it in the correct position in the invert of the tail skin. Each segment is 1.5 meter wide with 25 centimeters thickness. The segment hoist is then operated to place the remaining segments into the erector pickup area. The ring build is completed by inserting the key segment and tightening all the segment bolts. After the six segments have been installed properly, the shield jacks will then push forward and the excavation will continue. The tunnel is finished by installing a concrete invert, which is a permanent structure for the bed track of the MRTJ railway. When the machine have reached a designated distance, the machine will be arrived at stations. The final of arrival is at Stiabudi stations. And then the machine can be dismantled. One by one, the machine parts will be hoisted up to the surface. After completing the station and tunnel structure, the next step is to install all the mechanical and electrical components, including architectural works. All station's entrance and exit will be located at the pedestrian area for easy access for the MRT Jakarta passenger. MRT Jakarta Phase 1 is expected to carry 412,700 passengers each day. Travel time between Lebak Bulu Station to Bundaran HI Station is only 30 minutes with 5 minutes headway. This indicates that the target of this operation is so that MRT Jakarta will be the primary alternative of public transportation. The final impact of MRT Jakarta will reduce the level of traffic jam and pollution in Jakarta. The realization of traveling with comfort and safe will be experienced by Jakarta citizen with this MRT Jakarta operation.